Hey guys, say hello, kid. Be star. Hey, hey. Hey, star. I'm I'm charged, man. We have one of the dopest. I mean, livest uh, vocalist. I mean, mm -hmm. songwriter. I mean, this girl is just cold. Right. Money Long is hanging out with us today. Hello. How are you? Hey. Are you? What's going on, Queen? Man, relaxing out of my mom's house is one of the only places that I can come and actually rest. So that's okay. what's that. That's what's that. Yeah. 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 So you down in Florida? That's where you're from, right? Yes, ma'am. All right. Okay. So you're down in where it's nice. The weather's nice because it's cold where we are. <laughs> it's definitely not cold, but it was a little rainy. You no, know, Florida is like it could be sunny right here and raining right here. Yeah. 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 Better than being cold, though, because I don't like being cold. Listen, and it's cold. Oh, no, it does. <laughs> I yeah, see you got some hoodie inside. You see what now? I see, I see you got on a hoodie inside. Yes. I just came in, a little rain, about 50 degrees. So it is it is a little chilly up this way. It's probably about, what, 80 over that way? I don't know. It's warm enough for me to have on a crop top. There you go. I definitely got my I got my arms out. I'm trying to show out, but it's cold for real. Oh no, sir. I was had a blanket and everything. <laughs> Some hot cocoa. Mm -hmm. So okay, so listen, I was doing a little research on you and I learned something I did not know. I didn't know that you were actually discovered on YouTube singing words from the dictionary. That was one of my first viral videos. Yeah. Um back in 2006 wow I, it was crazy because it was like a night that in, in my real life was actually very traumatic um my stepbrother had a terminal illness and he had had a seizure that night and had to go to the emergency room so they came got him an ambulance so me and my little brother were just up it was like a tuesday like on a school night and um we were up at like one, two in the morning and I had to wait, stay up to wait for my parents to get back, you know, to un like find out what happened. And so I was just extremely bored. Um, and I was like, well, I'm going to record some YouTube videos. People keep saying I can sing anything. So I'm going to sing a dictionary. And <laughs> that video ended up going viral a couple of things i did to make it go viral like this was back when youtube still had um contact information at the bottom yeah it was actual people you know like real email addresses of people and um i emailed them the video and was like hey you know i can't remember what i said if like my name is maggie or something silly like that like um i'm reaching out on behalf of my client showing this video we think it would be great for your front page I don't, know, they you, to you I don't know if y'all remember this it was like there was only 10 videos that would pop up on the front page of youtube like the top videos yeah and i woke up the next morning and sure enough they put it on the front page and from there it was like on viral on myspace and on um it was one more thing i can't remember but yeah it went viral and that was like one of my first videos to do that. And then after that, I just had like millions of people coming to my page. Wow. That's crazy. Like just boredom, straight boredom. And you literally took you to the next level of life, really, from being a teenager. It's, yeah, I think I was 17 at the time, maybe 16, 17. Um, mm -hmm. But it normally happens that way, man. When you are relaxed, when you just relax and you're not forcing anything and you're doing things because it's fun or just simply because you want to, that's really when the world opens up. It's almost like, you know, uh, quicksand or like, um, yeah. you know, that like glue we used to make. I don't know if y'all did that where it was like borax and, and Elmer's glue. And when you squeeze mm -hmm. it, it's really hard. Then you let it go, it's running. Oh. It's, yeah. it's kind of like that with in life. Like the more you force, the more you try to like, you know, push your way through, um, people resist you. Right. It's like if, if I try to push you, you're gonna, you know, defend yourself. But right. if I say, excuse me, excuse me, politely, um, right. you sort of relax and you and you let me go through. So it's it's that way. It's like that's what I've 
realize is the more you overexert yourself and try and try and try, it just seems like it just doesn't happen. Hmm. Which is funny, right? Because like you think you would have to push through. Yeah. Yeah, but that's it's actually the opposite. And just even what you're saying, like how you just you were bored during that. I'm just looking like how you wrote hours and hours. It was like a real calm type of thing there too, real natural and organic. How that came about? And did it take minutes and minutes, or did it take hours and hours? Right. <laughs> uh, it, took, it took about 10, 20. 10, 20 minutes. minutes for a platinum head. Come on, minutes. I mean, again, I, I, I just, she I, you know, sometimes it happened. Wow. Yeah, literally, it's like it just poured out of me. It's like um, there's just certain things, and I'm sure you guys have this experience where, like, it's certain things that you do on your day to day that, like, you get through it, but it seems like it's taking forever, you know. And then there's certain things that you do that you just love, mm -hmm. and it's like it don't matter if it took you five minutes or five hours, you're having fun while you're doing it. And I think those are the things that you follow, like those gentle nudges like hey maybe this is what you should be doing mm -hmm. and i don't think um a lot of people understand that that's what that is and so mm -hmm. it's like anytime there is a gentle nudging for me to do something i do it it's like um when you leave in your house and and you feel the urge to grab a jacket like just just grab it just grab it because when you don't you're going to get into a situation and you're like Damn, <laughs> You know, it's like we get those every day. It's like those gentle little God whispers, you know, is what I call them. It's the God whispers. Like, I can't tell you what to do. I can't interfere with your free will. But pick that up. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like that God whisper. Cause I, yeah, because I, I get those all the time. Like, you know, um, I'll pick something up off the floor, like a sharp object or a Lego or, you know, I don't have Legos in my house, but something like that. Where it's like you, I, I just pick it up, and then later on, like I'm I'm getting up and I'm rushing around, and I realize like oh I would have tripped on that if I didn't pick it up, you know, or like I'll put like some cash in my glove compartment, like fifty dollars or just my change or whatever, and forget about it. And then a week later, I'm I'm rushing to get out of a parking garage, and I realize oh my gosh, there's cash on there. I don't have any cash, and boom, it'll be in the glove compartment. So I do that all the time. I just pay attention. And most of the times when you follow those crumbs, sometimes it only leads, you know, to something like, you know, you need the cash when you need it. Sometimes it leads to huge things. Um, like, you know, a Grammy Award winning song. It's like you you can't you don't know right. where it's gonna lead you, but you just have right. to follow the crumbs and trust. And it's it's like when I started living life like that is when things really started to blossom and, and happen in a way where I'm just like, yes, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Sometimes you get distracted. Sometimes I do get distracted. Sometimes I get caught up in like, you know, life's so hard or why isn't this person doing what I want them to do? But then, you know, you snap out of it and realize like, oh, no, wait a minute, let me focus back on what I'm supposed to be doing. Right. right. I feel like we just got a little therapy session, Sam. Like she just was just right. she just dropped jewels on us. Yeah. Yeah. I know, but I love how I feel like you're so in tune with like just your environment, everything. I love that. I wish I could be in tune with a lot on numbers now. Like, <laughs> I know that's right. Uh, a lot of <laughs> wow, I just need I just need one billion. That's it. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, so how did the writing connect come about, man? I mean, you wrote for so many people, man. Hit songs, Rihanna, and moving forward. How, how did that? How did that connect? That was really just like a very awesome journey. Um, I think it, it, I was very specific in the way that I asked for my success. Um, I want to have. I wanted to be sane. I wanted to still be a great, good person. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to remain human and, you know, not get too, um, you know, sometimes you can get in this bubble where you out of touch with reality. And so because I asked for that, it's like I got this really long school um, of just knowing what it looks like when it's not what I'm asking for, when it, you know, and knowing what it looks like when I am. And, you know, I don't want to name names, but I will say 
specifically like a John Legend. Um, he has treated me the same since I was 19 years old to now. And when I worked with him recently last year or the year before on Honey, the experience was incredible from mm. recording the song, super easy, not a whole bunch of back and forth. Um, it was like, hey, do you want to be on this song? Yes, sent it to me. I recorded it, sent it back. Oh, we love it. Can you add some more backgrounds? Great. And um, it was super painless. Video shoot time came. <laughs> you know, a lot of people don't know, like when you do a feature, um, there's a glam budget, especially for me, it's like as a woman, it's like hair, makeup, and wardrobe. And so normally people kind of go back and forth with you and they try to haggle you. And But there was none of that. It was like, hey, um, we only need you to have two outfits. And this is the color scheme. And it, it was just very organized. And then we get on mm -hmm. set. I was only there for a few hours. He was super professional. And so it's like, there are little, again, God whispers of like, this is what it looks like, when, you know, when you're asking for um, yeah. specific things and maybe stay away from this. And so throughout my career as a songwriter, um, you know, everybody's like, well, you should keep doing it. You're so good at it. But I realized what it was. It was actually really just school for me to learn, you know, the way that I want to operate. Um, and I started doing that because i needed a job like i needed money to be able to stay in california um being an artist is very expensive and in the beginning i didn't have it i did not have it i was cutting up like one piece of chicken a breast cutting it up in little slices and eating two for lunch <laughs> three for dinner two pieces of broccoli like i literally was a starving artist um i used to steal toilet paper from the studio empty the fruit bowl in my bag, you know, I was like, oh, these are my groceries. You know, you had to make it work. You had to figure it out. Yeah. And so I started songwriting just so I could eat and pay my bills. Um, it was never, you know, I mean, I thought artists wrote their own songs, to be honest. So I didn't learn that until I got to California. I was like, oh. But they actually, I was going to say, I think we lost Sam. I thought Sam looked like he was frozen. I wasn't sure. Oh, I thought he was listening, really. I think he did look like he was in deep thought, right? No, but I was like, he ain't moved an inch. Okay, so he'll probably just jump back in. But like you were saying, like how it's so tough, like just as a, a artist, just trying to, to to make it. And then you say, <laughs> getting into the writing, you weren't necessarily thinking that was going to be it, but it was a, a means to the next level. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm like, how do I stay in California, still be in the music business, but make money? Because I have these things that I want to do, but they're not free. And I don't have anyone supporting me. I don't have like the big, you know, bank account that I can pull from. My parents are regular working class. Like, I don't know. What what do I do? And so for me, it was songwriting. And I got to be up close in proximity to the things that I wanted to be doing. So I love it. I love your story. I love how it seems like it. Like you said, it's been a growing journey for you. You've made it, you know, what you asked very specifically, what you wanted. And God has a way of giving us things in ways that we don't expect it. Right. But mm -hmm. with that being said, we are just loving the new single. We are loving your music. And yeah. we just can't wait for you to come to Cleveland so we can see you in person. I'm going to come when it's warm. I knew you was going to say that. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I want me to do like some Christmas stuff. I'll come for that, but I'm leaving this way. As soon as I finish. Um, all right. I I I I get it. It. <laughs> we might not see you till 2024. Okay. I get it. I mean, it's only like two months away. It's not that long. Yeah, it's not. You're right. Well, thank you so much for chatting up with us, Sam. You know, we lost connection, but that's how it goes sometimes with these types of interviews. But we so love your music and we thank you for taking the time out to talk to us and have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Can't wait to come and see y'all. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> see ya. All right. Bye bye.